Ready Check Radio. Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Relic Grind, Ready Check Radio's Final Fantasy XIV Square Enix podcast, and welcome to the new year, 2023. Holiday break is over. We're back. We're back, and it's time to talk some Final Fantasy and some Square Enix. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, as always. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, listening on Spotify, iTunes, any of the other platforms, pay a visit over to readycheckradio.com. The website's right there. We got some changes going on, you might notice. They'll, they'll get a little bit bigger and more prominent as, as things flesh out. 2023 shaping up to be a little interesting on the Ready Check Radio front. Uh, and, of course, give us a like, a subscribe. Feed the Senpai algorithm while you're there. Joining me to talk all the Final Fantasy goodness you could want in 2023. Kicking things off, Mr. Chris Montoya, a.k.a. Tarkoth. What's up, sir? We'll try this again, right? <laughs> Greetings, I can, I can still hear you so far. <laughs> Take two, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been a good holiday season. I was with my kids for Christmas Eve. Then I went and visited them for New Year's Eve. And my Packers are still alive for a playoff spot. Oh, what a yeah. glorious time. I mean, the Steelers are still technically alive, but they need help. You guys is just winning in. Yeah. Winning in. <clears throat> Good stuff. Con- congrats. Congrats. And then flying high. Fly, Kronos, fly. <laughs> Mr. Not Adam so Lane. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we clinched we clutched like six weeks ago. Where you guys been? Yeah, it was like by your bye week. No, we, <laughs> like, we, 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 gotta, we have to win. We have to win, too, to be honest. Yeah, well, for yeah. seeding purposes, yes. Yeah, I, I think we need that. I think we need it. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> we also need our quarterback back. That's another thing, too. So, Yeah, talking yeah. football, obviously, thoughts with DeMar Hamlin. Uh, good yeah, news yeah. coming out of the hospital there today. Uh, so I hope things keep moving in that direction. And that any NFL player or football player at a college, high school, Pop Warner level, you know, seeing what happened, that you need help, need some help, reach out, get some help. Uh, don't wait. Don't wait. Uh, it's a scary thing, something you may not be used to seeing ever because of how rare it is. Thank God it's that rare. So get help. If you need to talk some, to somebody, talk to somebody. On that note, let's talk about uh, some Square Enix stuff. Your holiday gifts, Tark. Did you get anything, whether you bought it for yourself, you know, to, to Tark from Santa uh, from your kids, from your family, anything Square Enix, Final Fantasy related, uh, anything um, on that front for your holiday gifts? I mean, we talked about it before. I did purchase the uh, collector's edition for Final Fantasy 16 and the collector's edition for Octopath Traveler 2. So, yes, yeah, so you were kind of done buying Santa Daddy yeah, stuff. You were like, that's yeah. enough money. <laughs> I, I tried to get another thing, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I did. I did, too. Uh, we both were tweeting about it at literally the exact same time. We were like, this is bullshit. This is absolute <laughs> bullshit. What about you, Adam? Anything Square Enix or Final Fantasy related for Christmas? Saving up for the NFTs, man. You know? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't, I, didn't get I didn't get anything. I thought that's what you guys were talking about. You know? Saving up for the NFTs. Yeah. Bear down See, on my Let's Final go. Fantasy uh, gift was like a few weeks before Christmas, and it was Resurgence of Power, the latest Final Fantasy TCG yeah. set, Opus 18. I did get to play some out. of that. I did think. you? Oh, you're, or, you're back in playing a little no, bit? No, 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 no. John, John and them uh, came through on their way up for the holidays, and so I got to see them in, in here, like in Richmond. And okay. we played some games. I got to play with the new Final Fantasy VII cards. That seemed pretty stupid. But yeah, it was fun. Very nice. Very nice. So this is the first set, by the way, that has what most of you in like Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and, and Pokemon, and, well, not so much Pokemon, but Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and MTG would consider like true chase cards. Like, obviously, you do want to get the better legends and the full arts of some things, but they're generally, mathematically guaranteed in certain purchase bundles uh this was the first set that we saw a full art yuffie signed a facsimile signature uh signed card that is truly like final fantasy tcg's first chase card uh it is not guaranteed to be in a even a master case 
where if you buy a master case of 12 booster boxes, you have play sets of everything. You have a copy of every full art. Like, you are set across the board, collection-wise. This is the first card that is not guaranteed to be in every master case of 12 booster boxes. So, yeah. Whether you like that or not, I mean, obviously, as a player, I kind of dig that type of stuff. Opening packs, Tark, and you're like, oh, I got the, you know, super rare loot box. As a collector who always has to get <laughs> one of every damn card for every damn set and one foil and full art and promo of every card for every damn set, That's I was on you. really worried about this one. <laughs> Did you really get it? Really worried about this one. Uh, so we bought our, we picked up our case, got home. And Torchwick and I start opening it. First booster box, we hit it. Nice. First, bo I was like, oh, thank God. Because a buddy of mine got even luckier and pulled one in a pre-release kit the previous week and That's sold it good. three days later for what? 800 bucks. Oh, um, damn. I probably would do that too. Yeah, well, pre-release, the prices are yeah. way higher. And for something well, that rare, it's going to be crazy. What is it now, here, though? Here's the thing. The most recent one sold on the 16th of December on TCG Player for $1,200. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, and if it's not in a master. Be, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, the basic Square hasn't confirmed the distribution rates, the pool rates on it at all. Uh, in fact, RB did a stream, and I think RB opened one, too. Is um, there a foil on it? Yeah, oh, it's a foil card. I think it's yeah. always oh, it foil. It is a foil It's card. always yeah. foil, yeah. It is foil, okay. And uh, it's a full art foil of a card that's in a set with a totally different art on it than the actual card in the set, and it's has a facsimile foil signature. Um, yeah, and, and, and so they won't confirm it, but the, the community has kind of rallied and kind of figured it out that it's it's kind of trending. It looks like there's one every four to six-ish master case. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yes. Wow. So the odds are not in your favor. If you are looking for one, while they sell on the Facebook marketplace for about $1,200 still, there's one sitting on TCG Player if you really want it. Three grand. <laughs> yeah. Three Gs. Three Gs. And that's still a better value than any NFT you could find. <laughs> True. True. I mean, you get to hold it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually don't like mine. As long as like the card has like another version of it, I don't care. Like I think yeah. that's, that's from just a, player a pure collector thing. Yeah. yeah. From a player perspective, they've totally done it the right way, in my opinion. You know, it's an existing card with a different art. You just fine. You're going to get it in a box or two anyway. Uh, if you want to play the card itself from the collector's perspective, it sucks, man. That oh. sucks. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It hurts me so bad. I was like legitimately worried about it. I was like, I really don't want to buy a whole bunch of excess booster boxes. I mean, <laughs> I already buy 12 when a set comes out just so I'm fully if, stocked. If you but had pulled it two masters, would you have bought a third master? I would not have bought the second master. Okay, no. okay, you wouldn't even have bought the second one. Okay, no, one master, okay. twelve booster boxes, two half cases of six each. That's enough for me. That's typically what I buy per set. I, I pick up a master case that way. I have plenty of everything because there, again, there's multiple players in this house, and I funnel stuff to a lot of new players and things like that. So yeah, but Yuffie man, as soon as I opened that, I was like, oh, thank God. Because I don't want to hunt for this, and I am not spending eight hundred for it, let alone twelve hundred, let alone three grand for it. It'll be the he, first opus set that I have that's incomplete. The do you have a zero zero two? The, I do not. No. Okay. okay. No. Um, the thing that, that's I, and I'm okay with that one because it's not yeah. part of a set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I'd be a little upset if it wasn't. The thing that's scary is that this is a thing that's going to continue, and I totally get why, but it just, oh, God, as a collector, it makes me nervous that one of these times I'm going to be like, I don't have the full set. I don't have a collector's full set. Anyway, I total <laughs> sidetrack there. Let's talk yeah. about Final Fantasy fourteen and not FFTCG. Great game, though it may be. Obviously, last, uh, last time we left you, we were just a couple of days away from the live letter for patch 6.3 that live letter has concluded and we've got all the details in fact the uh god's uh site was updated today with even more information uh post live letter and we know that the patch will be out next week the 10th 
that's what we predicted based on everything else when Trove ended, uh, Treasure Trove ended, and all that fun stuff. The tenth is correct, six point three, just a few days away. Tark, what was your impression overall of kind of like the live letter, the information that we got, some of the site updates that we saw today? Are you are you pumped for six three? Because I see you playing a lot of Destiny two lately. I know I I. This is the first time I've really taken a break from 14 and I'm kind of feeling refreshed about diving back into it. So I do have to do a little bit more PVP to finish out my series. But yeah, everything from the live lover was uh, actually really encouraging. Uh, Some of the stuff I was looking forward to is pushed back to the half patch, but you know, can't have everything all at once. Uh, Ultimate I'm looking forward to, although I'm having problems with my group, but maybe we'll get that all sorted out in time. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, have more interactions with uh, Zero. <clears throat> yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second because we're going to show the trailer here and talk about mm. uh, things that go on there, and Zero does pop up there. But, Adam, I want to give you a chance to chime in on just your, your thoughts headed into 6.3 on Tuesday. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot in this patch, especially if you include the half patch. So there's a lot yeah. to be excited for. Um, I think a little bit of stuff for everybody. Uh, I had a few issues with some things, the way they describe some things in the patch, but I think what's in the patch is uh, is great, and I think the trailer is always good. So There is also something in the patch that's pretty divisive, though. Like, there's a, a clear cut. Yeah, there's, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But there is one piece that I'm seeing people very happy with and people absolutely not happy with at all depending on where you fall on the spectrum. We'll get to that in just a second. First, let's talk about the trailer, because as always, it was badass. It was badass. The music, the, the they just do such a nice job with these. We're not surprised by good. I mean, we're spoiled. We're yeah. spoiled oh, yeah. when it comes to this stuff. Uh, Especially when they moved to the newer fantasy. Because the, the, they had a previous format where they were yeah. you know, section off, and then now it's more like movie cinematic-ish, so... Um, yeah, yeah. They, they nail it every single patch. It's awesome. Yeah, and we do see our, our friend Zero, who all three of us very much like, look to be in a little bit of trouble here, Tark. Not doing not doing so hot. Not doing so hot, and it looks like it might be part of the dungeon, so I don't know if it's a cutscene or if maybe it's a uh, echo flashback, maybe, because uh, we still have that power. Um, but the, the key moments that kind of intrigued me is she had a sword and shield, so is she... You know, is she going to be our tank slash DPS for the trust or duty support? And then we saw a moment where she didn't have our, her hat on. So I was like, oh, I, all her hair. Cool. Um, but yeah, and then there was a moment where she was just totally in distress. And I'm like, oh, save her. It's my new girlfriend. Save her. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm amazed you haven't gone with everybody's new mommy revealed on the, the 6.3. Special so you, site you, you mean the one without the face? <laughs> the one without the face? <laughs> We have so many that are like, please step on me. It's like, it's okay. I, oh, you're talking about the dungeon boss. You're talking about the, yeah, dungeon. the dungeon I thought boss you were talking about the 24 yeah. man, the one that everybody went wild no, about. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, that one too. I mean, yeah. that one too. Uh, that's in the trailer though and has no face. We don't we don't see the face I, at all. That, that's like super intentional. From behind. No, oh, it's, it's 100% I, intentional. It's going to be a character. I, my theory is it's going to be a character we know. And that's why they don't want to show her face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here we're kind of okay. seeing that that section of the trailer right now with very Titan esque kind of landslidey uh, eruptions. Uh, yeah, and then of course the 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 Black Knight. I, I, I can't wait darkness. to find out. Yeah. Can't wait to find out who this is. Oh, this, this, whatever. This, this Dark Knight. This, that's this just being silly. Is this what twenty twenty three is going to be? Just silliness from you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then we all we had Calbrena before. Uh, but you see a doll like uh, so in, in the trailer show, too here. Th- they'll show parts w- for the updated duty support dungeon. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's why that's there. Yeah. Yup. So it's uh, looking spicy. Look at the music yeah. is great. If you haven't heard it, go go watch it. The music is fantastic. So can a team just outdoing themselves again. As you guys mentioned, though, there is a quite a bit of stuff. I thought a little more than I probably expected if I would have like actually mapped everything out. Kind of pushed to six three five. So although we're going to be getting the new main scenario quest and the dungeon and the trials and the ultimate, which we'll get to in a second, uh, the Unreal, sorry, and the uh, Alliance raid and then the ultimate and stuff like that. Yes, that's fine. Uh, 
Uh, those are some of those are in six three one, six three five, right? The ultimate in six three one. That's pretty normal. Deep dungeon six three five. But then we also have Manderville six three five. Trial quest for the Loperitz six three five. Um, that one's going to focus on crafting. Obviously, we've kind of already done the gathering and the uh, battle one, so we'll have the crafting one coming up with the Loperitz. Fits there as well. Deep dungeon in six point three five. A, gra a gathering and crafting update with tool enhancement quests, Splendorous Tools in 635. So kind of dividing it all up. I, I don't know how much of this, Kronos, is they just want to... They, they Things need to develop and they need a little more time. Or how much of this is, hey, the extra two weeks is people are feeling that. And so let's kind of space out this content within those 631, 635s a little bit more than maybe we've done in the past. Yeah, I could I could see that. To me, it just feels like normally they push a lot of these things that they push to three. Like, I, I feel like I've just come accustomed to like when the patch drops, it's like main story. And then like whatever, like 24 man slash raid, the normal mode. And then you get like the trial and then, like, the updated Unreal. And then, like, I feel like everything else is either, like, 0.1 or 0.5. Yeah. For, um, so it just, it just feels normal to me. But, I mean, that's a good point. Maybe, like, spreading stuff out makes more sense because I felt the law big time this time, but I also play this game a lot. So I I don't really, like, read too much into it. And it's also, like, holidays. So, like, it was even, like, I read even less into it. But, maybe, right. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, it's a good point. And I think, like, a lot of the content in the 0.5, like the Relic weapon... And the deep dungeon, if you want to sink time into that, like plenty of time. You know, it's funny that you didn't even talk about, and I think Tark like barely mentioned PvP. I, well, I still, you know, when yeah, when we came back, I was gonna put that in its own thing because we've just, got the series and the season closing with six three five. Do you feel like then, they're doing a good job with that stuff? Because no, I don't. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, uh, it's like yeah, the current series and season close with six three. Uh, series three begins. Season five of Crystal and Conflict begins. If you still remember the difference between series and season, great, congratulations. Because <laughs> I don't at this point. I I used to. Uh, they are getting a new arena, which is always nice. The the Clockwork Castle Town. It does uh, look neat. It looks cool. It looks it's fun just, as hell. <laughs> it's it's just like you know. I just I feel like they're not really pushing it. And I don't know, man. It's 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 wild because I think it is fun. I think crystalline conflict is fun, but it's just like there's not like even if you're just doing the series, and I feel like some people even gave up on that. I only do it because there's a mount in there, so it's like like if there was no mount, if there was no mount in this last series, I wouldn't have finished it. I don't think I like had to force myself to finish that. Right. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, to, I, I don't know. I just I just want them to put a little bit more effort into, like, at least hype it up. It just feels like now it's just back to what it was before, where it's just, like, yeah. the tail end of stuff. Yep. It's the thing or, people or forget they're about. They're going esports with it. Are they? <laughs> yeah, there's a whole I mean, I know they're, tournament. But they, had, they, but they had that for the not. feast. They had that for the yeah, feast. People just don't remember it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like the, the feast had a whole tournament at, like, all the fan fests, I believe. I'm pretty confident that happened. But yeah, it's we'll like get the fan fest stuff that. actually a little later too, because that was mentioned. Um, obviously, we know that they're going to have them, but we've got a, a, a smidge or two more detail on that. Before we leave content, though, new dungeon, Lapis Manalis, uh, new trials, Unreal. Of course, we knew was uh, Containment Bay, uh, Alliance Raid. Can't wait. I'll let you go, Tark. Go ahead. Omega <laughs> as your ultimate, confirmed. Confirmed. Uh totally awesome although it's still kind of vague like i don't know if, if they're gonna have other parts of it or is it just strictly omega what did you hear um, what, what he said he said it's all omega but like which is, which is bullshit but i mean he did say that but it's like, yeah he said it's all omega <laughs> but does that mean all omega raid or all just omega if you know what uh, i'm talking about I, I my guess like, would be the latter but you know i just i just hopefully i can get my group together so i can actually yes yeah, so what's going on, on yeah what what happened with your group uh so i got three people i got a full group but three people right. haven't gotten their eight clears yet and that's a oh yeah and that's a requirement yeah, yeah yeah so i don't i don't have a full group currently <laughs> so we, we're still recruiting people good but, times which, 
we'll you find excited? You excited, uh, Adam? Oh yeah, yeah. These are this is my favorite content in the game. Yeah. So, I uh, I probably spent more time to a Dragon Song than I did playing like the rest of the expansion. I think. So yeah, these are fun to me. I love I love these fights. Deep Dungeon, uh, Eureka Orthos coming. This is a six point three five thing. You have to finish the Endwalker main scenario and done at least up to floor up to and including floor fifty of Palace of the Dead. Uh, they did kind of mention though that this one, if you compare Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High, there's like kind of a clear difference, particularly if you're trying to solo those things uh, in the way they're tuned. Uh, mm -hmm. Heaven on High being tuned a little better for the solo experience while still mm -hmm. remaining yeah. challenging. Yeah. Uh, and, and he specifically referenced that this one, Yoshi P said, is going to be tuned that same way. So for those solo players that like a challenge, maybe did both or did one, Heaven on High and bailed on Palace of the Dead because of, of some mechanic challenges for solo players. There's some unforgiving mechanics in Palace for solo. Um this this is going to be a little more on the heaven on high side. So if you th like farming things like the you know the necromancer title, here you go. This this is going to allow you to to do that a little better than Palace of the Dead did in the past. New custom deliveries and then we're all, like UI changes. We're getting a UI improvement in six three. Icons for damage type now display in the battle log awesome. and flying text, so you'll know whether it's like physical uh, damage, magic range, healing, stuff like that. Uh, ability to display the remaining time for buffs and debuffs in the party list. This is fantastic. Fantastic. I've wanted this forever, and I'm sure as healers, both of you have as well. And if, if only I could have been seeing these things before this. Yeah. Match. Crazy. <laughs> like, wink, not just for wink. like healing and wink, stuff, but like wink. for mechanics too. <laughs> like, God, I have talked about this before, but uh, you, when you have a group and like new mechanics come out and you're like, okay, what's everybody's timers? Because you wipe because you don't know what the heck's going on. What was everybody's timers and what did you have? Oh, I don't know. Well, now we can kind of screenshot that. And it's just on the party list. I don't have to depend on getting seven other people to find out what everybody had for a debuff and what their timers were. So this is awesome. Just slap that screenshot button. I do like the clear blue UI that they're adding. Oh, I love the, the kind of Final the, Fantasy the Final Final 7 remake. remake. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that they said that they're going to. Uh, I put the, the old blue, introduce... like the classic Final Fantasy blue on for about yeah. half an hour. And I was like, nope. It's nope. like light. It's like using light mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that, that they're going to, uh, they're going to introduce more colors. So give me yeah. a clear green and I will use that all day long. Job adjustments. <laughs> this is the kind of <laughs> we have the device. This is the divisive one that that I've kind of seen split reactions. I don't really see too many people just like okay. It's either you're really in favor of these or you think they really didn't uh, do what they needed to do. Significant adjustments for Paladin. For Paladin. What do you think, Kronos? Paladin weak link for a while now. I don't so, know. If, I don't know if this helps, though. I, I don't know. I, I don't know because they didn't. All they did was just say a bunch of vague words. I have no idea what they're changing. All the so like I mean I can make some guesses and like there's definitely like well I can so tell the what direction. We do know, what we do know to give you the specifics we do have. Yeah. Uh, and this is courtesy of Nova Crystallis translations. Rotations have been shortened to accommodate high-powered actions. Damage right. over time effects for Goring Blade and Blade of Valor was Gone. removed yeah. and their policy adjusted. Divine Might is now applied after weapon skill combos, allowing an enhanced Holy Spirit to be executed without cast. Holy Sheltron's effect has been changed to reduce damage taken, thereby enhancing defensive capability against damage over time. That one's the great. Yeah, the previously removed Bulwark, Bulwark ability has been revamped and added back in, offering yeah. increased defensive capability. Utility yeah. of other actions and combos will be so, adjusted is kind of like the vague. There's yeah. other changes, but we're not so, ready to talk uh, to, about to, them. To me, the other things are a little vague, too, because there's so many. There's still things we don't know. Well, so the, the bulwark thing, I think, is because Paladin's always been short one cooldown, and the reasoning has always been, well, they have two party defensives. But I think that... With how tanking works right now, in short one cooldown, and wings is kind of like inconsistent when it's good and when it's not. Uh, so that's good. 
we don't really know how wreck wreck and fight or flight work which are like their big damage buttons so it's like okay their dots are gone and their damage is increased mm -hmm. to make up for the dots and we're probably going to use holy spirit in between combos because it didn't really make sense that pa good paladins were basically just dropping atonement stacks because it was worth it so i'm sure they'll fix that but like i think we're i mean and there's obvious like everybody wants to go to the two minute thing so like Probably Rex's gonna be or fight or flight's gonna be two minutes, and then the other one's gonna be a minute. I, I don't it's know. Gonna be flipped. I th I think I think Rex's gonna be the two minutes, and fight or flight's gonna be the one minute. And it's gonna affect all damage. Yeah, I think fight or flight's gonna not like be a timer anymore. I think it's probably gonna be GCD based, almost like in a release or something. Probably but that's be. just a guess. It's just a guess. Like we don't know. It, it, they didn't really go on because, like, I feel like a lot of these the, the general the general idea of the changes we kind of already knew they just hadn't really like explicitly said it i don't really feel like they explicitly said much that really gave us a good idea other than like paladins changing and we already knew that too mm -hmm. so yeah. i'm still like really super wait and see with this it could be good. i know I, I know some paladin people that like paladin that are upset because yeah. they like the way that paladin played and now it's just going to be homogenized into playing the way the other tanks that's play the keyword um and but that's like the game, right? I mean, that's here's the thing. I, I, under, I understand. I understand that people want to play these unique things, but the game is just designed in a way where like everybody's kind of like a different, slightly different flavor yeah. of what their role is. And and that's you know, and Paladin was the weird one, and now they're not. So, well, they probably won't be. Hey, were you too disappointed by the statement that uh, Omega was not going to be? probably perceived as being as difficult as uh dragon song no we like kind of still I, like I the pinnacle of their I difficulty yeah, I, yeah, they, we, they even say dragon that probably song, not gonna be. i i think dragon song wore down some groups oh yeah it was it was really hard and i mean it burned out people in my group that's why we're looking for people i don't blame them like you know they got burnt out um and i think they don't want that kind of burnout i think we can still expect pretty good difficulty out of this but i was never expecting dsr again i don't know if they'll ever do that again never say never but dsr yeah. is no. brutal uh to finish up new treasure map and glamour that comes with that obviously new year's a uh, the the new year's mahjong broadcast is january 9th i mean if anybody Oof. was waiting for good that good stuff right there the New Year's, you're just four days uh, away. A mere four days away. I yeah. will say this game got me to play Bajog. I had never played <laughs> wow. it before. Uh, All right. Yeah, I unlocked the orchestrian role, and I was like, nope, I'm done. Good. No more Majog. <laughs> 2023 is the 10-year anniversary of A Realm Reborn, and Yoshi P Crazy. says there are a lot of things planned. Uh, we'll talk about his letter to players in a second, which references him having been part of the project for 12 years. Uh, a limited time pop-up shop is opening in Osaka, so more cool stuff like the hotels we've showed off for our <laughs> Japanese friends. The Crystalline Conflict Community Cup Japan kicks off. We've already seen the Noram and the, uh, what, EMEA ones um, previously, so... Fan Fest in Japan has dates January 7th and 8th, 2024 in the Tokyo Dome, so a year from now... That's... Don't forget, Housing Demolition is coming back on with 6.3. They're hiring an MMO marketing manager in North America. And man, I would love to apply for this. <laughs> I would love to apply for this, but I'd have to move to El Segundo, California. So Yeah. <laughs> um, that Tokyo Dome thing, though, that is absolutely impressive to kind of give people here in the States an idea of what that kind of means. It's like if our fan fest was in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it's, it's that, a big that level of Yoshi P said all three awesome. of them are going to be much bigger than yeah they've ever had before, and it makes I, sense, you know, celebrating if, the tenth as we go into this. If they sell out the Las Vegas Convention Center, though, that's also going to be that's a massive. big deal. Nuts. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. Uh, patch note reading January 9th, and of course he plugged pre-orders for Final Fantasy 16 being open, which we talked about last show. Gentlemen, have you done your Heaven's Turn event stuff? I, I hope just, you did your Starlight stuff, because that's I already just, gone. <laughs> I, did, I, did I, did, I did my Starlight five hours before it ended, so I, I still got <laughs> some time on my Heaven's Turn, right? <laughs> I, you got a little bit of time. I saw the yeah. mount for Starlight, and I was like, let me just get that before I forget. The so, reindeer? Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, oh, and New Island Sanctuary stuff, I should say, in 6.35, too. We didn't that. Mainly, like, functional stuff. We're getting our take-all buttons, uh, oh some God. rewards, uh, reward additions, things like that. Not, like, any Workshop UI huge. stuff. Yeah, not any, like... Just, I just hope I have enough. I, will, I hope I have enough saved up, or I just don't have to do anything because I have a lot of uh, scripts saved. What? How many do you have sitting there? Two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah, you're okay. good. You're good. <laughs> All right. I, I thought I thought I was bad. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm at like one eighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that's pretty close. That's pretty yeah. close to be honest. I mean I already saw the the gill mounts are in the game, so that, there goes my uh my gill. My gill's now gone again. Right. It, well, okay, it depends how much they cost, but I'm assuming one of them's 100 mil. So, yeah. Yoshi P published his New Year's greetings letter on January 1st to the fans. Pretty, uh, pretty short. Like we've seen, I've, we've definitely seen longer out of Yoshi P when he when he likes to get a little verbose on some posts. Talks about him being 12 years since he came on board with Final Fantasy 14, the 10th anniversary, wrapping up the whole. Uh, Scion's storyline with Endwalker and getting ready to kick off a new storyline that we've kind of started to see take shape. Uh, and we've got a, a little mysterious letter, as he always likes to do. I have it on the screen now with gladness for their blessing. Unto the twelve we pray for ten more dawns as brilliant as this resplendent day since first began our journey like many years we count each step that we have taken a challenge to surmount yet still the faint horizon and lands where few have gone renew our weary spirits together we march on from the journal of a well-traveled young man any hints there uh tark anything hiding in there that you can parse out Talking about the 12, it's got to be talking about the 24 man raids, uh, 10, uh, it's got to be talking about the next 10 years. Uh, God bless Yoshi P for staying on for 20 years on an MMO. <laughs> um, not much else though, really. All kind of vague. Always is. Always is. Always is. Uh, and then he plugs Final Fantasy 16 again. Like, I, I don't know why he would do that. Like, yeah. why, why would he want that? <laughs> That's to do his well? other job. <laughs> uh, and does like give Creative Business Unit 3 uh, credit for all the work they've done there. And then is very helpful in providing a hyperlink to the pre-orders page. Should you <laughs> like to pre-order Final Fantasy 16? Uh, I think we've seen more out of Yoshi P in these letters. I think he was just like maybe deserving you know, or maybe enjoying a well-deserved break here, Kronos, because it was kind of, I love you all, but I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be that. He is also working on another AAA RPG. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. like, yeah, so. Exactly. And remember, like I said before, Housing Demolition is back with 6.3 next week. It's kind of weird, too, like, based on, based on if you've been in your house since the last time it was on, then your timer is going to set based on the last time you were in your house. If you were in your house while it was off, then it's going to start at the 45 days. So you want to check out the site if for some reason you aren't in your house all that often in Final Fantasy. Just make sure you reset that demolition timer on patch day. Go visit your house on patch day either way, and, and you're fine. And you're fine. And you're fine. And we are getting, like, more 1800, wards. 1,800 plots. Yeah, more wards. Still doesn't solve the problem, but <laughs> still not enough. <laughs> Eighteen hundred per world, still not enough. <laughs> Enjoy your lottery. Enjoy your lottery. Good luck, Tark. Here is the best item that was revealed this week too. One of many minions were shown on the stream, but this mm -hmm. one by Hi. itself got a little video release by Square Enix. This little corgi buddy with this this minion man. I don't. We don't know how to get it yet, but yeah. I got to get this little guy. This I'm going to name, I'm gonna name it Yoshi Pete. <laughs> this little guy is too cute. I feel like this too is Cash cute. Shop. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> hey, don't. Minions on Cash Shop, what, five, ten bucks at most? I, I'll drop something, that. Something like that. Yeah, I'll drop that. Let's move on to some other Square Enix news, because in addition to Yoshi P writing a letter to players for the new year, of course, of course, that means... Yosuke Matsuda, Square Enix president, had to write the New Year's greeting for the company. And if you remember last year, 
he kind of got lambasted for talking about going into blockchain and NFT games and all that stuff. So, you know, 2022 was, I don't know if you noticed, a pretty rocky year for the whole NFT blockchain industry, whether it was gaming or not. Uh, and so what was Square Enix going to do? They started trimming some of the stuff, right? Got rid of the Western U uh, studios, kind of slimming down their operations in Japan. They're canceling a number of products. We'll talk about some of them in a minute. You know, kind of just like trimming what they view as the fat. What are they going to do? Backtracking. Backtracking. The backtracking on some things. So maybe they're going to backtrack the on NFTs and blockchains. Uh, maybe. Blockchain technology. Maybe. 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 Well, in the letter, Matsuda says that uh, 2023 will be a year of major evolution and transformation for the company with multiple blockchain games based on original IPs <laughs> under development at this time. Saying blockchain has been an object of exhilaration and a source of turmoil. But with that in the rearview mirror, we hope that blockchain games will transition to a new stage of growth in 2023, acknowledging the somber string of news stories with blockchain connections that were all yes. over <laughs> media and the internet in 2022. He thinks they that that's actually made blockchain, these challenges have, have made it a better option for Square Enix now. If this proves to have been a step in a process that leads to the creation of rules and a more transparent business environment, it will definitely have been good for the growth of blockchain environments. Keeping a steady eye on these environmental changes while considering from a higher level perspective what Web 3.0 and blockchain entertainment are actually all about prevents or presents a different vista than if we focus on them solely in technological or speculative investment terms. As I said in last year's New Year's letter, if we consider traditional gaming to have been centralized, then blockchain gaming must operate based on a self-sustaining decentralized model. It is that concept, that philosophy that I see to be the key. So no, doubling down. Doubling down, going to no continue bad. along this line. Okay, now can a lot of people were just like kind of poo-pooing his, hey, now's a good time to get, like I get what, what, he was, what he was probably trying to say, right? One of the best times to buy into the stock market is when the stock market is doing horribly, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that, that's... Doesn't mean that you're going to make all the best investments, best choices, and that it's easy. Just take some money, do this, and you'll make money. But that's when, honestly, a lot of people make huge amounts of money. People that have huge amounts of money to put in at those times uh, benefit the most. So I kind of get, like, maybe that's where he was thinking, look, blockchain's had a really rocky year. Lots of theft, lots of fraud. I mean, just look at people who are probably going to jail for a long time, based on some things yes. that happened this year. <clears throat> um, allegedly. 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 You know, maybe you kind of view that as, hey, look, you know, costs are coming down. Interest is coming down. That's the best time to jump into it. But you do that in the stock market because you assume, hey, the world isn't going to end, which means the stock market will eventually rebound in some way. I don't think you could take that same approach yet with blockchain, Web 3.0, or NFT stuff, uh, Kronos. I, I don't think you have that. It's not going away. It will be back. Do I trust leaving my money there for a year while it comes back, like you might with the stock market? Maybe he has a lot of money in there already. He needs other people to buy back in <laughs> to increase his. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't say I was super More shocked by trading? the doubling down. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm thankful for Yoshi P. Maybe that's why Yoshi P's letter was so short because he knew this was coming. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not, to say I'm not excited by this is an understatement. <laughs> so it's pretty bad. Unreal, Tark. Doubling down on it. Doubling down on it. It's awful. It's awful. NFTs. No fucking thanks. So that um, news makes you sigh. Go ahead. It's, it's just... I, I don't understand. Everything's... 
in, in that sector is just like plummeting and he's all like, yes this is it let's go and i'm like oh no no maybe if we see that this is actually like a good game can we get a good game first and then maybe yeah whatever you know, happened to make a game for fun a game yeah, yeah what happened whatever, whatever happened to just like it's like that's the main goal of the game oh lord yeah uh, if you need some more Square Enix eye-rolling news for you, Yuji Naka, and we've talked about this before mm -hmm. both times when he was accused of insider trading on a very small scale when uh, him and some other Square Enix employees found out who what company was going to be assisting with the Dragon Quest mobile game and investing in them. And then we talked about it on our last show before 2022 ended where he put substantial amounts of money into the company that was going to be assisting Square Enix with Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier mobile development, prior to that being announced as well. Now he has been officially indicted. Yuji Naka indicted over $900,000 of stock. Ouch. Most of that was, of course, with the Final Fantasy VII, of which was like 834000 of it. Uh, we don't know when he's going to stand trial or anything like that. There are a couple other Square Enix employees, but Yuji Naka being an ex-Square Enix employee and probably the most notable Kronos given his history with Sonic the Hedgehog. And, and of course, you know, the wonderful game. Uh, Mal and Wonder Kron I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how could you forget that masterpiece? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wish him the best. <laughs> I, I mean, Good luck. I feel like he might be going to jail for quite a bit, or at least, uh, you know, something of that similar nature. Maybe you know, he'll paint blue and start running real fast. Japan's commissions don't play with this kind of stuff. Nope. They, they, they don't. Uh, and in the even here in the United States, like, we put Martha Stewart in prison for this. Like, mm -hmm. like, yeah. and her case was far less uh, concrete than Yuji Naka's case appears to be. Appears to be. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so I got a rumor for you two, and I want to know if you think it is what everybody else thinks it is or if you think it's something different, okay? So we had the letter from Yoshi P. We had the letter uh, from Square Enix president. Now, we also <laughs> have a little bit of a, a letter, a little just a word, if you will, a few words uh, from a Final Fantasy guru. Um Series producer Yoshinori Katase, who teased a big announcement that is unrelated to Final Fantasy VII. I'm going to read you the full thing because it's not very long. Uh, Square Enix New Year's 2023 greetings. Happy New Year to you all. Final Fantasy 16 is set to release this year, which means Yoshi P needs your support now more than ever. Cheer him on as he gives it his all down the stretch. Also, Development is picking up speed on the title I'm producing, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm sure many of your collective imaginations are running wild trying to picture how we'll create some of the game's most iconic scenes, and we'll have more to share about that when the time is right. There's also another big announcement, unrelated to Final Fantasy VII, that I can't say anything about just yet. Rest assured, we're working hard to make sure 2023 is the most exciting year yet. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth producer, Yoshinori Katase. Any ideas, Tark? Because the primary idea seems to be on the internet. Finally hearing about a Final Fantasy Tactics remake, remaster, whatever. Some type of project along the, the tactics line. What do you think? While I would love that, and I think it's coming, uh, especially with Tactics Ogre Reborn uh, getting so much love. But I think it's going to be the other piece of the NVIDIA leak that hasn't come to pass quite yet. Mm -hmm. And that's Final Fantasy IX Remake. And I think that would be amazing if that was shown off in splendor and glory uh, this year. Torchwick, Torchwick would be absolutely thrilled his favorite Final Fantasy. What do you think, Kronos? Um, Final Fantasy NFT, something like that. <laughs> uh, no, I, I hope it's not that. I, I was, I would probably oh lean God, more toward funny. the the Final Fantasy Nine. I, I've heard like a, more rumblings about that, but uh, it could be tactics also. But I would probably put my money in on Final Fantasy Nine or or an NFT. Honestly, it might be an NFT. I don't, I don't know at this point. If it's tactics or nine, I'm in. 
If it's NFT, I'm out. Non fungible uh, Final Fantasy tech. Fantasy Just remember though, they, they did say that NFTs. they did say that the stuff they have in development are new original IPs, and they have been pretty vocal about at least in the short term picture. Final yeah. Fantasy and Dragon Quest, not so they're not really ready, being dragged yeah. into the the yeah. NFT blockchain stuff. So, mm-hmm. I mean, but that was short term perspective. Well, yeah, we'll to see. be well, also, when did Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One get announced? How many years ago was that? That was quite a while ago. So, mm-hmm. even if they announce this, it might might be a minute <laughs> before it comes out too. But I, I will I, say I, this: mercifully, Square Enix is taking the Chocobo out back and shooting it by the shed. <laughs> They did that game dirty. In addition so dirty. to ending some, um, ending some bravely default mobile stuff. Was it bravely default? No, Octopath's uh, mobile stuff in Japan that they're closing down. They are finally not supporting Chocobo GP anymore. Season five will be the last season where Prize Pass levels are used in Chocobo GP mode. Operating policies after season five ends are detailed below. Rankings will continue without the use of the prize pass levels in the same way as the current season's off period. There'll be no further large scale updates to the game after season five on uh, that update, which already came on Wednesday, December 21st. It will remain possible to play the Chocobo GP mode itself. And then obviously their cash shop currency Mithril has stopped being available uh, for purchase and yeah we hope you continue Just... to enjoy chocobo gp so when you take a game imagine this guys when you take a game that has high nostalgia value for players and you make what was a decent game like the racing aspect of the game and stuff i enjoyed like i played this for a hot minute a hot minute until the first season came out and then i was like no i'm out <laughs> When you over monetize it, make it a live service, half ass it, try to jam it down people's throats, you end up shutting it down a year and plus later. And we've got all kinds of mobile titles from Square Enix proving that, Tark. One of your favorites, uh, their, their Battle Royale. Now we have Chocobo GP. We have the Octopath <laughs> Mobile closing down. We have Babylon's, it was Babylon's Fall. Is that what it's called? Babylon's Fall. Babylon's yeah. Fall closing down. Like, when Marvel's Avengers, you you crammed the the same live service payment mm. model into that, and look where it went. When is Square gonna learn? I like I heard I, I don't know you may or may not be a fan. God, of, I hope uh, it never crisis. James <laughs> James Stephanie Sterling. I I do enjoy their contents uh, from time to time on certain topics. The best quote I ever saw on this was Square Enix was like I and I'm paraphrasing Square Enix trying to do their best to be the EA of the West oh. or the EA of the East. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, that's like, yeah. when are you going to learn? That's pretty Sad accurate. But true. Pretty accurate, yeah. Like I said, they, 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 they're they overdue on making that shrine to Yoshi P because he that man keeps this company in business because <laughs> everything else, well, okay, and yeah. 7 Remake. But after that, it's like the, the other stuff, they, they don't even, the, good, the stuff, the other stuff that's good, they say is unsuccessful. Like and, and, and then, then they sell the studio. <laughs> they sell the yeah, studio. so like I don't understand. I don't. Which get they it. then say that they're going to use to put into NFTs and then backtrack that. But now they're going to go for that. it. Yeah. <sighs> well, I will say this: on our last show, Tark was right. Mm-hmm. I was right. Mm-hmm. Partial. You guys. Partially. Partially. You guys. Partially. Like, no, oh, that's not going to happen. They're not. Gonna Partially. Happen. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster is getting a physical release and it's a there are depending on you which one stuff you want to purchase there is our options to get all of them in one that's cool yeah, that's awesome not only did we think it was like like chronos and i kind of thought i don't think uh, physical release maybe i would like it but i don't think so but maybe uh, all both of us were like there's no way they put these all together in one package they just they're just and they did they did. did. So Absolutely. let's go pre-order it, guys. We all we were yes. looking forward yeah, to this. No, no, no. Let's get. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're still dealing with Square Enix here. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you see, so you can't pre-order it anymore. Um, Tark and I noticed the literally we weren't kidding pre-show. Virtually at the exact same time, what mm-hmm. had happened. See now, what had happened was <laughs> <laughs> Square Enix in its infinite wisdom threw up the pre-order page 
at about 1 a.m. Eastern United States time. On the West Coast, that's already 10 p.m. So basically, the United States is done for the night, you know, as far as that type of stuff goes. They really didn't tell anybody that they were going to do this. There was no... Adver- real advertisement. Uh, technically, they had a couple things social media wise, but there was no like, hey, this is going to be the pre order date. They'll go live this time. Countdown. Click here. Website crash. You know, there, there's none of the big fanfare. It was just like, yeah, it, it's out. I mean, they did it right for Final Fantasy 16. You know, they had the pre orders and yeah. they had um, the pre orders were live and they had a time announcement for collector's editions. Yep. Um, and then if you were, you know, paying attention and on the ball, like I was, you know, you could get a collector's edition. Yeah. They did it under the cover of darkness. Yeah. This was like, nobody's buying this. Just throw it super up on Super limited quantities. Yeah, super, super limited. limited. They have an anniversary uh, edition that was $260. Hell no. Yep. The standard edition was 75 And since you can only get it on Square Enix's store... They're yeah, shipping before, before shipping, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's notoriously awful. expensive. Awful. Add twenty five dollars to hundred dollars for that. I yeah. paid their that, shipping exactly one time, and I refuse to do it ever again. Yeah, that basically put the collector's anniversary item at about three hundred dollars, and the standard physical version at about a hundred dollars. Uh, they sold out fast. They were gone, and yeah. So there you go. Way to go. And I found out about it a whole day later. Yeah. No, it wasn't a whole day. It was it was like ten hours later because you and I were oh, kind of tweeting about it at what like awful. nine a.m. my time, and so that would have been like eight or nine hours prior was when they had gone up. So it was it was just bad. It was bad. Let's end on a good note and then go to love it or leave it. What do you got here, Tark? About our boy Kenny Omega. Do you guys like wrestling? I do like wrestling. I, I know like who that. Kenny Omega is. Did yeah. you you yeah. didn't know he was a video awesome. game fan? He, uh, no, I, no, I, I, I definitely, was a video game yeah, fan. I, I knew he was a video yeah. game fan. Well, do you know, like his, so One Winged Angels finishers. is actually is, one of his finishers, and the V Trigger yeah. is the other one. The V Trigger yeah. is from Street Fighter. So his yeah. finishers come from Street Fighter and Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big, he's a big gaming nerd. And that's he, awesome. He used to come to tournaments. I've actually met him at fighting game tournaments. He's, he's participated. Yeah. He's, he's an awesome dude. Um, but yeah, he, uh, was well, in what Japan, he did at Japan's event, right? Wrestle Kingdom just made him a me, even more awesome dude. Oh, yeah. Came out in a little bit of Sephiroth guard, garb. Got a whole set of... Uh, we don't have the video, right? We don't have the video. No, of this? no. It's ah, embedded yeah. in a tweet. It's not really con- okay. It's not really nice to try and grab it the way I grab every other thing for B-roll. Okay. Well, he's got his back turn. He got these 15, 16 jumbotrons. And then we, we start hearing some music. Some one-wing angel. And he throws out his arm and on the Jumbotron, big black wing. It was just epic. The guy's awesome. (laughs) Very Sephiroth cosplay and the music was fantastic. I'm sure it's something that I'll have to show Domina um, at some point. She's a huge Sephiroth fan. So that's her Final Fantasy Bay, I guess. Or husband, husbando. 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 Let's go on to uh, Love It or Leave It. Love it or leave it is the way we end every episode of the Relic Grind here. It's where I ask you about something Square Enix related, and you tell me whether you love it, want more of it, leave it, throw it away. Today, since we're talking about 6.3 Live Letter, I want one item that you loved from the Live Letter or patch 6.3 piece of content, like whatever. Could be a Live Letter thing, could be something in the patch. Uh, And one item that you'd leave, that if they, they didn't have to put it in, take it out right now, what do you got, Kronos? I'm disappointed we're not talking about NFTs. I feel like that would have been very device, device. Um, but uh, I, for me, it's easy. Uh, it's the ultimate. It's always the ultimate. The ultimate's in the patch. For leave, though, I, I just don't care about Tataru's Grand Endeavor. I don't even know like why that's a thing anymore. Like, it just feels been, weird. Like, a bit slow, too. Yeah, I, I, maybe it's like amping up to do something, but everything else I'm definitely gonna do. And I did that. I just I feel like I'll do it because it's like on my map. <laughs> <laughs> just just to clear it. There's a marker. Yeah. Get it off my screen. What do you got, Tark? 
I, I got two two items. I just couldn't decide. They're both awesome. And one was during the break. Kyoko san playing piano. That was just so awesome and lovely. Uh I I actually went back to the stream and and replayed that because it was just excellent. Um the other one though, I, I was rolling. Uh, Yoshi P doing the new uh jump puzzles and just falling and falling and seeing his face and just disgusted with himself and Fox Clan, like, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Yeah, watching that, that I was, was like, awesome. see, fix the hitboxes. <laughs> see, <laughs> fix the fucking hitboxes. Uh, Do you know how aggravating these things are? Because the hitboxes suck. <laughs> and he says that he usually plays the controller, and, and here he's playing mouse and keyboard, so I can kind of give him a little bit there. Um, the one that I'm going to leave, though, uh, I got to echo uh, Kronos' sentiment. Tatara's Grand Adventure, like, I'm not touching this until it's done. So I'm not... I'm not down with this one two minute quest every single patch like when it's all done i'll i'll, I'll dive into it and check it out but that's all right I, two expansions from now they'll make you do it for the relic uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're probably not wrong you're probably and you'll not have to wrong. do all the catch up like you did for hildy <laughs> Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to love the game celebrating its 10th anniversary. And I, obviously I look forward to fan festivals, uh, uh, all over the world and hopefully making it out to Vegas for ours here in North America, but to celebrate 10 years of a game that honestly, when I originally beta tested the version 1.0 way back when and thought, this oh yeah, is DOA, uh, and I'm a final fantasy fanboy. It's awesome to be sitting here. Uh, 10 years later, well, 12 from there, uh, talking yeah. about this game, still having a love for it, still having a great community, and having all of you watch and hang out because we love the game. Uh, so that's my love it, them talking about the 10th anniversary and hopefully some big plans, as they mentioned. Leave it. I'm going to give it to PvP. If I'm being specific, uh, honestly, the series season segregation system, the way they do those for Crystalline Conflict and PvP overall, uh, I, I said this when we first saw them revealed. This is needlessly complex. Like, there, there's no real reason for it to be this way. Um, just do a battle pass and everybody would have understood that. You know, just there, there we go. We're done. Uh, and it would have made, I think, things a, a little bit easier. Not that that's the reason PvP isn't doing all that well, mind you. It's not. I just, if I had to be specific about the leave it, it's the segregation of series versus season. Don't go anywhere, gang. She's back. She's feeling better. She I'm had alive. the holidays. It's a new year. She is alive. <laughs> Faye is back for a stream after the show. How are you, Faye? I'm doing a lot better. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Yay! Excited to to try again. We're we're gonna take this year as a fresh start and hopefully be a whole new real fae that actually like can do stuff. So. Well, happy holidays, happy you new well. year to you. What are we playing? To <laughs> Baron and Chat. Um, I remember her. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk all about it while I drag y'all into my compulsive Hades addiction that I've picked up over the last Ooh. few weeks of being stuck yeah. in bed. <laughs> I saw I played that a while ago. Havoc, my brother just recently got on it, has has absolutely loved it. And now my uh my kids, Torchwick and, and Michael, are they're both addicted to it too. And I'm like, man, your dad beat the Super shit good. out of that game a year ago. Come on, kids. Yeah. Come on, kids. Yeah, also, like, behind the times, but it was finally on sale on the Switch. I beat it up so. when it was in early access. Get on my level. Get it, you can get it for like well, one fifth the price of the Pixel remasters. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um maybe have a little more fun controversial I don't Oh know. my God. That's funny. Don't go anywhere, chat. We'll need just a minute or two to relabel the stream and everything will go dark for a moment. Come on back and Faye will be playing some Hades. We, of course, will be back on Saturday, 7 p.m. with our first episode of Gaming Gumbo for 2023. And then you can check the schedule down below here on Twitch for all the other streams. Until next week's show, Kronos, where can everybody find you? Uh, yeah, same as always. Twitter, I'm a bit, been a bit busy the last couple weeks, but um, I've been posting mostly Marvel Stab stuff too, but yeah, if you want to talk about that or, or whatever stuff, I'm I'm always on Twitter. Tark. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at Tarkoth Gaming. 
playing some Crisis Core, going to be, be get, getting back into Final Fantasy 14 here real soon. I really got a PvP here really hardcore this next weekend. And then I will be finally back on Ready Check Radio this Saturday with some voice of cards. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio so you'll know every time we go live. And we'll, of course, be back next week with the patch 6.3 initial thoughts and reviews. Until next time, gang, stay safe. We'll see you on the server. Later. <laughs> <laughs>